Banks can refuse to open a customer bank account if they think that the customer will pose unwanted risk. This has profound effect on the life of the customers that are rejected because having a bank account is fundamental to participate in modern life. Hi, my name is Julia, I'm an anti-money laundry specialist and today I'm talking about bank the risking. Bank the risking or the banking is the process under which banks and other in financial institutions reduce their exposures to customers that they consider as high risk for financial crimes and other regulatory non-compliance. Bank the risking has gained prominence since the raise of anti-money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism standards, also called AML standards. New Zealand has been complying with the AML standards since the coming into force of the AML Act in 2013, which is based on the principle of risk-based approach. This means that bank and other reporting entities are expected to assess their own risk in terms of money laundering and financing of terrorism and put in place measures to mitigate those risks. The risk-based approach does not mean that high-risk customers need to be avoided. Quite the opposite, it means that if banks want to have an high-risk customer, they have to put in place measures to mitigate the risk that the customer brings. The AML Act does not require a bank to reject high-risk customer, but banks are commercial endeavors and they are driven by profit. If the bank assesses that the costs associated with mitigating the risk of a customer are too high compared to the profit, they will likely reject the customer. Money remittance are considered high-risk customer, both here in New Zealand and worldwide, and this is why they are often the target of bank the risking. This video focuses on money remitted the risking, what it means, and what can be done. Chapter 1. Money remittance. Money remittance is the process of sending money from one person to another in different countries. For example, migrant workers will send money back home to their families. International wire transfers can be done by a variety of institutions, including banks, but some people still prefer to use money remitters because they're fast, they're affordable, and also for uh, cultural reasons. For example, here in New Zealand, we have the 20% of all money remitters are in South Auckland, and they serve the Pacifica community there. Because of the global reach, money remitters are vulnerable to money laundering, and this is why they are the target of the risking. And even though it's understandable that banks want to be prudent when it comes to money remittance and when it comes to high-risk customer, it's also true that people still want to use money remitted service. And because of that, some money remitters have resolved to use personal bank accounts, to open bank account without declaring the real use of the bank account, and also to use Hawala transfer of funds. Hawala transfers is an informal way to move funds without actually moving the money and it's based on a network of brokers that are situated in different countries. Informal money remittance and awala transfers are usually done for legitimate purposes but they also present a lot of threats. First of all they often use cash which is vulnerable for money laundering because it's mostly untraceable and second if regulated and registered or remittance they have to comply with AML standards, they have to ask ID to the customers, they have to report certain transactions to the police and registered unregulated money remittance they grant no certainty that this standard are complied with. So this is clearly a problem. What do public authorities say about it? Chapter 2. The Reserve Bank and the High Court In April 2022, the High Court of New Zealand was able to review the Reserve Bank position on the risking thanks to a case between the Reserve Bank and some money remittance. The money remitters said that they have been denied bank accounts from banks because of their overly zealous views on AML obligations. They also said that the Reserve Bank has done nothing to reverse this trend and to make banks to open bank account for them. On the other side, the Reserve Bank responded that a blanket direction for banks to open bank account for customers without considering the risk of each customer would have been against the risk-based approach principle of the Act. The High Court agreed with the Reserve Bank and it said that it was not for the Reserve Bank to put its own assessment in the place of each bank. It also said that banks are entitled to restrict dealings with customers that they consider high risk. The High Court also said that banks not opening bank account for money remittance did not mean that banks were acting imprudently instead. It represents more careful compliance with AML Act obligations and may very well suggest a greater prudence in the part of the trading bank. This is what we were discussing just before. The AML Act does not necessarily exclude customers, but banks can refuse customers if they deem it appropriate, which means that money remitters find it hard or even impossible to open a bank account. This is how things are now. The Reserve Bank fostered a case-by-case -case assessment and the High Court backs up the Reserve Bank position. But there are some evolution 
on the side of the high court thanks to a case between the Christian Church Community Trust, also known as Gloria Vale and BNZ. Gloria Vale had multiple bank accounts with BNZ for 40 years until BNZ closed Gloria Vale bank account following an employment court decision. The decision found some children age six working for Gloria Vale. This is child labor and it is against the BNZ uh, internal human rights policy and this is why the bank account was closed. BNZ gave two months notice to Gloria Vale to find out the banking provider, but no other banks wanted to open a bank account for Gloria Vale. And this is why Gloria Vale challenged BNZ decision and they asked for an interim injunction, which means that they asked the court to make BNZ keep the bank account open until the trial is concluded. During the interim injunction, the high court challenged the common law position that a bank account can be closed by a bank upon reasonable notice. And while considering that Gloria Vale will be found itself without banking services it considered. These submissions raised the question as to whether there should be protections for customers of banking services by way of a requirement on the bank to provide transactional services as a minimum. The High Court granted the interim injunction to Gloria Vale, but we don't have a decision on the matter. It would be very interesting to see how this case evolves because a decision on favor of Gloria Vale will potentially change forever how we look at banking services. The Gloria Vale case is important because if the High Court decides in favor of Gloria Vale that banks have some duties to provide essential banking services to customers, this could have positive effect on money remittance the risking as well. While we wait for the decision, what else can we do? Chapter 3. Recommendations Recently, the Commerce Commission issued a draft report on personal banking that focused mostly on the competition in the banking sector. One of the recommendations of the draft report is that banks allow for essential services, which means at least a bank account where a customer can send and receive money. The draft recommendation is in line with the interim injunction, but at this point, it looks like the recommendation mostly focuses on personal banking, which means individual people, customer rather than companies uh, like a remittance will be. This is why I think it will be interesting to look at what our neighbors are doing. In Australia, the Council of Financial Regulator issued some guidance, some recommendation to the government on how to deal with the risking. The recommendations span from getting more data to issuing some targeted guidance to its affected sector. And in particular, two recommendations will be key to New Zealand. The first recommendation regards transparency and fairness, and it asks banks to give the bank customer a reason, an explanation of why they've been debanked, and to let them know that they have access to internal dispute resolution. Both of these measures will give money remitters the chance to understand what they can do better, and they'll also give them a chance to ask for a second review. The second recommendation regards capability uplift, which in practice calls upon the government to invest on specific and targeted education on the affected sector. Knowledge is power, and with more knowledge, money remitters will be able to better communicate with banks and they will be able to show them that they are compliant and safe. Chapter 4. Conclusions Money remittances have an important role in society. They serve a wide array of customers, including vulnerable communities that rely on their services. When money remittances are denied essential banking services, they will use alternative and more risky ways to transfer money. The Reserve Bank fostered a case-by-case -case decision when it comes to high-risk customer, and even though the prudent approach of banks is understandable and it's compliant with the Act, it also means that often money remitters are denied essential banking services. Currently, the High Court seems to support the Reserve Bank position, but things may change soon, both at the High Court and at the Commerce Commission. To achieve a more secure and more equitable financial system, we need banks policymakers and customers affected by the risking to come together and formulate solutions. These solutions, in my opinion, should include enhancing fairness and transparency and investing in targeted education. The importance of training is a nice segue to today's sponsor. The sponsor of this video is me and my consulting business, Total AML. If you are a reporting entity in New Zealand, I created an anti-money laundering online course for you. This micro-learning experience allows you to watch the videos at your convenience, covering everything you need to know about AML. The course also includes supplementary reading materials for further insights and engaging case studies to reinforce your understanding. All information is linked below. If you made it till here, thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the usual. Let me know what you think about the risking. My name is Julia from Total AML. I'll see you next time.